Perhaps one of the most important parts of your astrophotography rig is your mount. I've owned a number of different mounts in the past and have had my fair share of issues. Today I'd like to help you diagnose and potentially solve common guiding and mount related issues that have a negative impact on your astrophotography. The beginning of this video will quickly focus on setting up your mount to communicate with your computer. If you've already set up your mount, just skip ahead to get to the section on diagnosing potential issues. Setting up your equatorial mount. Obviously, set up your mount. Firmly attach the mount head to the tripod and attach the eyepiece holder on the bottom. This will help with stability. Now here is where some things will differ. Some newer mounts come with a USB port installed, which will allow you to simply use a USB-B cable to connect the mount to your computer. Some older mounts and other brands of mount may require you to use a serial to USB adapter. This can either be an EQ direct cable, which skips the hand controller and removes it from your setup, or with a USB to RS-232 cable to connect it into the bottom of your hand controller. These are the cables that I use. To control your mount from your computer, first you're going to need to install some software. Before we do anything, these are recommendations for Windows operating system. Check the description below for installation tips for Mac users. First, make sure you have .NET 3.5 installed, which you may already have. Next, download and install ASCOM and EQMod. The links are in the description. Download the v200w setup file. The defaults are fine. You may also need to install the drivers for your particular mount. In my case, is the EQ6R Pro from Skywatcher. The links to all of this are in the description. So now that you have your software installed, simply plug the cable into your computer. You may need to change the baud rate if EQMod isn't immediately finding the mount. You just have to change the baud rate in EQMod and in your COM port settings as well. Defaults worked fine for me as I use a USB to RS-232 cable. The USB version may require you to increase the baud rate. When setting up your software, make sure your guide speed settings are the same in your guiding software and on your mount. With your mount set up and the imaging software of your choice installed, you go out and start imaging. You notice there are some weird streaks in your image. What's going on? This is the start of the mount and setup issue diagnosis section of the video. There are a few different reasons you may be getting streaks. The first is probably due to polar alignment. There are many solutions to polar aligning, including the Pole Master, Sharp Caps Polar Alignment Routine, Drift Alignment, and even just the Polar Scope built into your mount. That said, there are a bunch of other reasons for streaks as well. Not being perfectly polar aligned will cause the stars in your image to streak, causing you to lose your guide star if you're guiding, and is generally just something you should avoid if you want good images. Try to get it as good as possible. Obviously, this isn't the only reason you may get streaks in your image. There's plenty of other reasons for that. The second possible cause is periodic error. So periodic error is caused by the gears inside your mount. As they rotate through each cycle, different parts of the gears are interacting with each other as they rotate. Small imperfections in these gears can cause your image to rock back and forth slightly. This can be fixed by running periodic error correction, which you must train EQMod to do by guiding on a star, clicking the small screen with a plus sign and moving to the PEC section and hitting record. For more details on setting this up, check out the link below. Another reason is flexure. So flexure is when you have parts moving on your setup that shouldn't be. This doesn't necessarily have to be on your mount and is commonly due to the guide scope moving around. If the guide scope moves in a way that your main telescope doesn't, it will cause streaks due to your guiding software trying to correct for this movement. But since it doesn't know the difference between flexure and normal movements that need correction, it will just go in the wrong direction and cause a streak. To fix this, try to lock everything down as tight as you can. I would also opt to remove guide scope rings that you can adjust in favor of tube rings that simply lock your guide scope down. A fourth reason is backlash. If your mount is trying to make a correction in a particular direction, there may be a lag time between when the motor tries to move the scope and when the gears of that motor actually engage with the gears that move the scope. If it is constantly going back and forth, there will be a small bit of time when the gears are not engaged. This will cause your guiding to not actually correct for a movement it detects. You can try setting up backlash compensation in PHD2 or in EQMod. Attempt adjusting your gears meshing or balancing your telescope east heavy so it's always being pushed by the gears. Mounts with belts should not need this and require a good neutral balance. A link to adjusting your gear mesh is below if you'd like to attempt it. Just keep in mind that you shouldn't over adjust your gears to the point where they bind. There will always be at least a small amount of backlash. Another cause for streaks might just be the wind. Fighting my mount for a little while through this wind that I'm sure you can hear. 
Our mounts are great, but even a slight amount of wind can cause cables to vibrate or catch your telescope like a sail. There isn't much you can do about this other than pray to Aeolus, the Greek god of the winds, or just try and block it as much as you can. Additionally, your mount may just be undervolted. This isn't really a problem when you run your rig off mains power, but it can be an issue if you're like me and you image using batteries. If your mount is making scary noises and the power LED is flickering, you're probably just undervolted. Finally, there are software issues. The reason I decided to make these videos is due to the issues I was having a few weeks ago at the Denver Astronomical Society Dark Sky site with my mount shutting off randomly throughout the night. The problem would shut off my mount's tracking and as a result my images turned out like this. I haven't been able to replicate the error due to high winds and cloudy nights, but the cause could have been related to several different issues. A few fixes included increasing the guide speed rate, redoing PHD2's calibration, turning off mount limits in EQ mod, and was potentially just a bug in the newest beta of Nina I was using. If you are getting nonsensical issues like this, your best bet might just be to update or downgrade your software if the error is new. Another reason for streaks is your guiding. I recommend running the PhD Guiding Assistant to help decide what settings are best for your particular setup. Guiding can cause streaks when the aggression is set too high, with PhD overcorrecting and moving your scope more than it should. As always, there are a bunch of resources on how to improve your guiding in the description. Some possible fixes for mount-related issues involve tearing apart your mount and cleaning all of the internal components, and using new non-manufacturer grease. Some greases are not rated for the lower temperatures some of us image in and can get gummy if it gets really cold out. I've made this upgrade a few times and have used a synthetic silicon lubricant that can handle the cold. My setup also runs quieter than most when slewing and I think it helped improve my tracking. That's it for mount related and mechanical issues. I hope this video was helpful to you for diagnosing issues you may be struggling with. Be sure to check out my other videos in the Complete Troubleshooting Guide series for additional tips on issues unrelated to your mount and the mechanics of your setup. Also, please feel free to join the r slash astrophotography discord server or the r slash ask astrophotography subreddit for additional or more personalized help with your imaging problems. I wish you the best of luck with solving these issues and thank you for watching.